G'day, I'm James and welcome to video 3 on our story of quadratics. In fact, it's been quite the story, it's about the story of the power of area and in particular how symmetry is our friend in that story of area. Because symmetrical shapes, namely the squares we've been leading to, the quadrus shapes allow us to solve a whole host of quadratic equations by using the power of symmetry, by using the power of a square. In fact, that square even led us to the famous quadratic formula. But today I want to do something that most curricula also want us to do, but it breaks away from the story. In fact, today I'll do the beauty and the thinking behind breaking symmetry by talking about something called factoring, factoring quadratics. So it actually breaks away from our story of symmetry because there's one special case, just one special case, and if we're lucky, it turns out you don't need symmetry to solve quadratics. And that's what I want to talk about today, that just that one rare special case that can happen. Alright, but to begin with, let me start with a puzzle. It's this puzzle. It's about the powers of 2. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. The powers of 2. Actually, it's not about those numbers. I want to subtract 1 from each of these powers of 2. So I'll do 2 to the 0, take away 1. 2 to the 1, take away 1. Take away 1, take away 1, take away 1. I'll take away 1 from each power of 2. And that will now give me this list. 1 becomes 0. 2 becomes 1 less. 4 becomes 1 less, and so on. So I'm getting the numbers 7, 15, 31, 63, 127, 255, and so on. Because back in the 1700s, mathematicians noticed something very curious about this list of numbers, one less than a power of two. In fact, a French monk by the name of Massin was the first to really think about this and talk about it and really let the world know something strange is going on. Because what did he notice? What did he notice? Pick a prime number like, I don't know, 5. 5 is a prime number. 2 to the 5th. 2 to the prime number, take away 1, is 31. That's prime. Pick another prime number like 3. 2 to the 3 minus 1 is 7. It's prime. 7 is prime. 2 to the 7 minus 1 is 127 and it turns out 127 is a prime number. Uh, 3, 5, 7, let's go down to 2. 2 is a prime number, it's the only even prime number, but look, 2 squared minus 1 is 3, it's prime. So it looks like 2 to the prime minus 1 is always prime. Hmm. Actually, that turns out to be a false pattern, because people realized fairly early on that 2 to the 11, 11's prime, minus 1, is 2047, and that turns, to equal, turns out to equal 23 times 89. So it's not prime. Alright, okay, so this problem's not, not, this pattern's not true in general, but people are wondering, how often is it prime? How often does it become prime? And here is a famous unsolved problem, still unsolved for this, to this day. No one knows how often is 2 to the prime minus 1 actually prime. People have some examples. In fact, people only know 51 examples. There are only 51 examples known to mankind of 2 to the prime minus 1 being prime. In fact, the 51st example was just discovered a few months ago as of, as, as of the taping of this video, December 2018. It's this one. I have to get it right. It's 2 to the 82589933. Turns out that's a prime number. Minus 1 is prime. This is the 51st example of what's called a Massen prime. Massen was the person who first started thinking about this in a serious way. This is the largest currently known prime as of the taping of this video. 2 to a prime minus 1 again is prime. But no one knows if there's another one to be found or not. Maybe the list stops now. Unsolved research question. Does the list of mess n primes keep going or does it stop? No one knows. By the way, this is a huge number. If, actually, if I could write this one out, actually work it out, it's about 24 million digits long. It's a huge prime, a big prime. Alright, but here's my question. So, Mersenne was a very clever mathematician. He knew that 2 to the prime minus 1 is sometimes prime and sometimes isn't. But he knew this in particular. He knew that if I took 2 to a composite number, composite number minus 1 is never prime. It's never prime. So, no hope of finding primes if you go 2 to a composite number minus 1. For example, 2 to the 6 minus 1 is not prime. 2 to the 8 minus 1 is not prime. 2 to the 4 minus 1 is not prime. That is guaranteed. So, here's my question for you, which is related to the work we're going to be doing today. Let's do a specific example. Convince me 
that, I know, 2 to the 300. Let's do that number. There's a composite number. 300 minus 1 is not prime. I believe that's a very big number. Your calculator probably couldn't handle it, probably couldn't show you all the digits. Nonetheless, convince me this is not prime. That's today's puzzle.